Hello, Darren. Hi, Darren. I'm just going to shut the door. My washing machine's out. Yeah, okay. Can't hear it. Can't hear it. Which is funny if they, uh, if the audience knew how long it's taken me to get ready this far. We start, um, I've been a bit muddly this morning, haven't I? So, nine. day nine of Christmas. Day nine. January the 2nd. Does it, this, really this feel like, does it really feel like Christmas on the 2nd of January? No, I was, I was just about to say, this is where it gets rubbish, really. It's, uh, I don't want to go back to work, even. Well, shall we reveal what day it actually is when we're recording it? Uh, yeah, what day is it? <laughs> oh, it's, it's the day after Boxing Day when we're it recording. It is, 27th. So, so I think today we can still feel some remnants of Christmas, can't we? A little bit. I was, I was getting a little bit bored earlier on. Um, but I'm going round to a friend's tonight, so that would be a bit more Christmassy. Um, I did a uh, Christmassy walk uh, with a few people. That sounds nice. Yeah, I must say, actually, uh, I am sort of super aware of a few people around me spending uh, Christmas alone this year. Right. Um, and so I found myself uh, just trying to make a bit more effort with those people. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of Christmas, my Christmas has been spent on my own as well. So it's not like I'm, you know, people in glass houses and all that. I mean, I, 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 I uh, would very easily have spent Christmas uh, alone yesterday and today had I not uh, yeah. made an effort. We self help. Yeah, yeah. By helping other people. But it's cruel. It is a bit cruel Christmas with that. It's like you can you can go in it into it with the best intentions of oh it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a day. It's just a day. Yeah. Yeah. Is it though? I know. And and as much as I try with all that stuff, uh I I also, if I'm spending Christmas alone, can it can still get in through the cracks. Right. Yeah. Because <laughs> Every advert, every program speaks of togetherness the whole time. Yeah, you know what? Back. I think it even can. It can get in through the cracks, even if you're spending time with someone and you're having a nice time. Um, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you, you, you can, it's like, well, but I'm having a nice time, but all those people on the telly look like they're having a really nice time. Yeah, and I've not got as many people here as, and it's just like it, it, it can, it can, like you say, get in through the cracks. Yeah, I had a really sort of slightly black moment over at my sister's, and I can't quite explain it, but just it was just a oh Jesus effing Christ! I kind of wanted it to stop. Right, <laughs> and I can't fully explain what it was. It was no one person's fault. It was just. It was just a general feeling of too much Christmas. <laughs> well, there is also that thing, as, as, as much as I was saying, you know, you can you can look at things on TV and think, oh, well, they've got a bigger family gathering. It looks nice. But also there are times at Christmas when you really had enough of your family. And you, oh, you, I mean, that, them, yeah. you certainly want a break from them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Didn't happen to me this year, but occasionally it has done. Uh, yeah, my sister's got uh, three kids, and uh, I think they're something like, I don't know, 22, 20, and 15. Right. And there's still just about enough kids to get something out of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Archie, uh, I hope... Hope he doesn't mind me saying this out loud. I'm sure he doesn't mind me saying this at all. Uh, Archie, the middle kid, is uh, a Christian. He right. believes, and actually, uh, I don't at all. But yeah. um, 
it's quite nice having one person around who believes you're celebrating in the birthday of our Lord Jesus, because yeah. you know, that was the original point. And yeah. even though I don't, I think it's quite handy having one. And um, like he did it so quickly, I barely noticed. He did it almost as a mumble, but he very, very quickly uh, um, said grace. Right, and I sort right. of uh, wouldn't have minded it if he'd uh, have made a bit more of a thing of it. Actually, I felt like he uh, downplayed it. I think he did it quickly. Yeah, you know. So uh, I don't know if he was embarrassed or just didn't want to embarrass anyone. Actually, I think it's more he perhaps didn't want to embarrass anyone else, but he just did it. I think it's, isn't it? It's funny though, isn't it? Because I'm I don't believe either, um, and there have been times when I've had quite strong feelings against religion. Generally, I'm fairly apathetic. Um, but um, sometimes, I don't know, at Christmas, like the one time of the year, you, you give in and allow yourself to enjoy a bit of that ceremony. You know, you, you might put the uh, a Christmas concert on, on like late Christmas Eve nights at, at, at is it usually at King's Chapel or something. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, it definitely is Christmassy, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it uh, is. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever gone to midnight mass. Uh, I'm not. Uh, it's it's very Christmassy, as you would expect. Um. Uh, I have at times been a little more uh, hardcore um, in my atheism. Yeah, but I think I'm a much uh, gentler atheist now. Yeah, and me too. I think I've mellowed. Um, I think one of the things that uh, mellowed me was uh, my uh, Thankful Villages project. I bet and, it did. And uh, the position of the the importance of the church in rural life and meeting a lot of people who worked for the church and having a lot of my um, assumptions of rural life and rural politics yeah. and religious people and their politics um, was turned on its head. And um, I remember one guy particularly who was a church warden and helped me a lot with the history of the church and uh, um, and it was on. It was a visit to a thankful village. For those that don't know, actually, let's go back a little bit. <laughs> For those that don't know, a thankful village is a village where every soldier returned home alive from the Second World War. There are only fifty-three thankful villages, and I visited every one and made a piece of music in each one and a short film. And. Uh, and it was on the Remembrance Weekend. And I said, oh, are you going to the service tomorrow? Because I was. And he said, oh, no, 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 I never go to church. And I said, you what? He went, oh, I'm an atheist. I went, you're a church warden? He went, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, look, you know, I really believe in the church's place in this community. And I think it's really important we keep this church going and all the activities around it. I think it's good that the roof is on it and I'm a church warden. I have keys for it and I, okay, I can't go to church. I don't believe in God. Wow. And uh, I thought that was a, a, a very good one for turning my preconceptions on their head. Yeah. It's, I mean, I keep, I don't know if I've mentioned it in these, this series of videos. I'm sure I have done. I've mentioned it to you. A, a book I was reading that I've finished now about uh, being in the flow of things and uh, very pertaining towards creativity, but it's all about. Um, well, I, I didn't realise well, it was going to be this. It, a lot of it is be about having a purpose in life, and it right. does mention that the church provided that uh, to a lot of people, and it doesn't as much anymore. And this is where you have um, uh, a lot of people feel kind of a little bit more lost and it's because the church doesn't play that role in people's lives anymore for a lot of us. Um, it's quite interesting that, you know, how do you replace that? Yeah. Uh, and so it's nice that he, you know, he recognised 
the value of the church to that that community. Yeah, um, but like, and like me, I, I I don't think I I wouldn't go to church. Uh, but I, I can see the value in having that that focus in your life. In fact, a lot of a lot of what he did was about that gap, actually, because he uh, he also did a thing where he did readings and helped arrange humanist funerals. Right. Yeah. But I think sometimes when atheists die, their family goes, "Oh, what do we do?" Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> there's not as many made-to-measure, uh, you know, solutions for the atheists, and so he sort of helps with that arranging sort of humanist or atheist funerals and you know has has readings he can do for people that need that i'll point, nice. I'll point to him on twitter he's an interesting twitter follower as well this guy mm. um, so anyway wow Darren. that got heavier than i thought yeah <laughs> let's lighten it up what's that you're painting well i've drawn in drawing club uh, not drawing club, sorry, Brentwood Tuxedo. Uh, I've uh, drawn Star Wars figures uh, before. But I'm sort of like kind of in what I've been thinking about a little bit today is um, sort of ersatz or uh, faux Star Wars. The... Um, the toys that sort of went suddenly space crazy. Yeah. Uh, after the Star Wars films. And this actually, we, um, we did a little thing on Twitter a couple of days ago to suggest things for the 12 days of Christmas, 12 toys of Christmas. And this was someone's suggestion. Right. And as soon as they flashed the picture up, I was like, yes. And this is exactly the kind of Proustian rush that I really like because <laughs> I don't know. I just hadn't thought of these things uh, in ages. So what I'm drawing is the space ranger outfit for action man <laughs> and action man as quick as they could think of it started doing rockets laser guns and everything yeah. for action man within i don't know not long you know they 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 lots of these toys couldn't go quick enough and i might even for tomorrow's day as well stay on this theme of copycat star wars but also i think what's well i think what's fun about a lot of it is firstly how cheeky they are or aren't right how close they go yeah and i think in this case it's sort of how close they aren't is quite funny i mean yes you kind of tell they've gone to bob in the costume department who's used to doing you know i don't know a grenadier guard outfit or something yeah said, quick come on knock some out star wars yeah. And I think I think it might be clear already in my drawing. I'm quite enjoying this drawing actually. Yeah. But um yeah, I mean it's it owes a lot more to a an almost like a I think it owes quite a bit to like a, a Jerry Anderson kind of it Star does. uh space. I'm not I'm not sure Bob has seen Star Wars, to be honest. Exactly. And I think they're the ones that really chime with me, the the ones yeah. where that did buy my own. Star Wars. Okay, fine. You want aliens, do you? <laughs> yeah. And Bob's like, I've got this, we've got a, a diver's outfit. We can maybe repurpose exactly. bits of that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very much that. <laughs> uh, let me have a look over on your screen. Oh, I don't know what's going on there yet. So it's a slightly wonky drawing, but it's uh, it's the game of life. Oh, okay. You remember that? It was a traditional board game. With, I remember um, it existing. Yeah. But I and could you had little possibly, cards. I could possibly say that I've never played it. So you could right. you could do with talking to me as though I don't know it, and I would be welcome for the explanation. Well, you had little the, – the game sort of – it was a, a track in the same way that Snakes and Ladders is a, is a, is a track. 
and you just yeah. follow along, follow the yeah. road. But it's uh, the the nice little twist is that the the as you progress through the board, you're actually progressing through life, <laughs> uh, and you form a transport as a little plastic car with six holes in it. And it starts, the car starts off with one peg in one of these holes. And then as you grow up, you may get married and then you put another peg in the car to your wife or your husband. And then you put, you have kids. And so you get more pegs going in the car. No idea what relevance those pegs played actually, apart from symbolizing uh, partner and children but is 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 the way to win the game to have a heteronormative uh relationship to marry <laughs> to procreate and to earn money is that the, the game of life's definition of a good life uh, basically it is yeah because uh, I, I wish to because i wish to state publicly i have very much failed at the game of life <laughs> and i'm and I, i'm only like i've i've not won uh, on the count of not having the kids. So yeah, yeah. you probably you probably come like third oh bullshit. You probably come third place or something like that, haven't you? I mean Yeah, and you'll be fourth. Married, at least. Yeah. yeah. Um but, uh, oh, but the great well, thing about, about this do game, I earn extra points well, in the game of life by having a divorce behind me? Does that little div- divorce energy uh, mean I've that was, I've I've lived a little bit more? No, I think that would you'd probably have to go back a few spaces. <laughs> this is an American game. It was very much um the divorce would be frowned upon in terms of trying to promote a good uh good old fashioned yes. American family. Yeah, I think so um, too. Um but um the, the the great thing about this game that that everyone loved, there was a couple of things. One it had little buildings on the board, little plastic buildings that you could slot in underneath the cardboard. Uh, right. And they, they didn't fulfil any purpose, but it was really good fun putting those buildings into the slots on the board. So the kids loved <laughs> that. And the way you moved wasn't by rolling a dice. It was by spinning this wheel in the middle. Of the okay. Board. And it was kind of like a roulette wheel with... um numbers around it one to ten and it had a little plastic thing don't know what you call it that, that stuck at the wheel like you see them on the game of fortune is it game of fortune wheel of fortune things like that yeah and so that the wheel would spin away and eventually it would stop i think points. that you felt that there was a little bit more value in those uh games that gave you a dice alternative yeah it's yes. like, oh, not a dice. Do you remember the games, I think from Waddington's, that had the dice, but in a plastic, uh, like, dome, yeah. and you popped it's it. Popper. Went, pop, pop. Yeah, it, that, that was Ludo. Yeah. Yeah, that had it. That was good as well. Now, that, this um, is the stuff of time travel now. This is, we're, we're striking the gold now. I've not thought about those popper things. Oh, I've given given Action Man quite a black eye here. <laughs> no, they were um, they were. It, you're right about it. anything that that is a diff, an alternative to throwing the rolling the dice. You still get it in in a modern board game um, where dice are required. Um, there's a thing called a dice tower. <laughs> uh, that you can buy them separately for people who love playing games you can buy dice towers anyway but some games come with them and you put the dice in the top of this tower and inside the tower are a little series of shelves so that when the dice drop they would hit the shelves and roll and they come out the bottom <laughs> and they can roll for you uh, and is, some, are they some sort of, it's more fun than th- sorry are they sort of in some way trying to because I felt like this way with the popper mat was it called popper matic yes it was yeah and I feel this with the popper matic dice bowl thing I felt like they were trying to up the randomness 
Yeah. To say, to say, look, this is even better than, you know, can you truly trust your hand? To yeah, be exactly. Yeah. How can you trust that person who's throwing the dice? This is tamper-proof randomness. I sort of yeah. felt there's an element of that to it. Definitely. Well, it all it is really, it's great fun. It's just over-engineering um, yeah. concepts of rolling well, I dice. Said, I said, it, because I suppose, of course, the best board games are, you know, really normally a piece of cardboard and a dice, aren't they? Four counters. Yeah. So they had to think of more to, to demand their price of entry. I can't remember how cheap they were, these like, board games as a kid. Well, I mean, also, if if I knew the price of what they were, I don't know. My mum and dad used to take me to a uh, saver centre in Basildon. Right. And they used to stick me over at the toys. So just stick around here and look at the toys. And thinking back, I felt like I was there for hours. Yeah, yeah. I used to get so bored. Uh, <laughs> and I remember I used to look at the toys and slowly, the longer it took for them to do the food shopping whilst I was kept amused looking at the toys, I basically used to sit there and think about stealing stuff because I was there for so long. <laughs> I just started thinking, well, how hard can it be? No one's looking. Can't see a camera. Got quite a big pocket here. Don't think I ever did. I mean, I, 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 we could talk about my kleptomaniac period if we like, but it wasn't then. That was later. Let's let's save that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then one day, it's around Christmas, I just looked up and then saw them. They'd obviously tried to get into the toy department without me seeing, and saw them with a big monopoly. It was big, a normal sized game of Monopoly under their arm. Right. Hmm. Now, I've got to do the thing I always sort of dread when painting. I've got to try and mix up a uh, purple. It's quite hard to mix purple, isn't it? The, the, either the red or the blue always overpowers the other colour. I think it's more red than you think. Yeah. I think you could be right. Very faint shadow on this guy. Do, do, do you remember this guy I'm painting? I'm not sure I do. There were so many of them. Yeah. I had the uh, deep sea diver and the normal like soldier action man. Deep sea diver that had the proper sort of almost Jules Verne kind of like diving helmet thing. Oh, no, actually, no. My, he was a diver, but he wasn't the deep sea one. He was a frogman. Like a scuba, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he had um, like an orange uh, plastic wetsuit. So obviously, I'd, he could come to the bath with me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that so funny? I don't know. <laughs> it is so, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really think this is make or break with this 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 guy. This purple colour, this purple stuff on his. Uh... We've talked before the problem of. <sighs> Painting something which has a lot of design on a flat surface. Yeah. So you have to sort of render the design, but then you have the problem of your own handwriting. Yeah, I'm kind and of doing your that. own style. So how much of that style? Because what they've used here is the uh, that kind of digital typeface. Um, yeah, like calculator. The typeface, no, no, not quite that. I know the one you mean. You mean the the, the typeface which has the segments yeah. of um, the LCD 
display. Yeah. No, I mean the sort of typeface that's, um, oh, I can't, I can't try to think like tomorrow people would have used this typeface. Right. Maybe space 99 use this typeface and it's kind of a blocky kind of digital. Right. Um, I think I can picture it. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not drawing it. So you're not going to see it. On my <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty proud of this this guy. He's looking good. I, yeah, yeah. What I need to do is I need to sort of make it look like there's a plastic visor because on his visor he's actually got some perspex. Right. I'm trying to think of a way to, and I might go for the old Heyman classic of a white gel pen. There we go. Yeah, straight away. Straight away. Straight away. It's so simple. Just a little trick for you there. Tuxedo fans. And even, you could even then do the lightest black line as well. That's it. And then a little more weight. the outside of the visor so that's sort of recessness there's also these stickers are black and he for some reason has number three on them. <laughs> what did you get for Christmas, Darren? Sorry? What did you get for Christmas? What did I get for Christmas? Uh, Show me, have you got one present in the room that you can bring to the camera? No. <laughs> I didn't get a great deal. I got um, stuff that I needed. <laughs> well, I got stuff to wear and stuff to drink. I remember uh, last year, um, someone we both know on Twitter, uh, Andrew Mayle, uh, said a truism. He said, there's an age when socks go from being the worst Christmas present to the best Christmas present. Yes. Last year, I got 10 pairs of socks from uh, yeah. Patrick Grant's clothing company. And I was absolutely delighted with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to the Patrick Grant Company. Never heard of them, but we do do endorsements if you want to send us some socks. It's community clothing. Patrick Grant's the fella off um, Sewing Bee. Oh, I wouldn't know that, but yeah, sure. Good chat. Good I'm, chat. I'm prepared to say that this is my favourite drawing so far from the 12 days of 12 toys of Christmas. I'm very happy with this. It looks really good. I think you've done yeah. a good job. I've, uh, I'm, I've, I'm stopping mine because I'm bored of drawing it. <laughs> I'm stopping mine. Um, uh, let's, let's reconvene tomorrow for the yeah. 10th day of Christmas. 10th day of Christmas. 10th yep. day of Christmas. See you, See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Darren. Bye, Darren. Thank you.